Now, you have to understand one very important point in this particular question. Look at current I2, it starts from 5 volts battery, let's say for example, it will keep on flowing through this short circuit branch. It will reach at point A. At point A, it will then pass through 2 ohm resistance because this resistance is redundant. Now, when it comes to this particular node, it has got two options. It can travel through this path and it can also travel through this path. The question is, will it split into two currents or will it completely flow through either this branch or this branch? Let's answer this question. When I2, which is of 2.5 amperes, come to this particular point, it is important to note that it cannot split into two currents. In fact, even a small part of I2 cannot flow through this branch because let us say for example 0.5 amperes flows through this branch and 2 amperes continue to flow in this particular branch. In that case, there is a mismatch. The mismatch is that the current that we had started with in this branch was 2.5 amperes because that was my I2. And now when I'm reaching this end of the branch, I'm saying that the 0.5 amperes has gone on this side and this current is 2 amperes, which is not possible because both the points are part of the same branch. So the conclusion is if the current in this part of the branch is 2.5 amperes, current in this part of the branch must also be 2.5 amperes. And hence this entire branch must carry 2.5 amperes and a simple conclusion is that nothing can flow through this branch. Entire I2 will keep on flowing this particular loop only and same explanation can be given to I1. When I1 reaches to this point, in this part of the branch it is 2 amperes. When it reaches to this point it is 2 amperes and when it comes down it has to be 2 amperes because only then it will continue to become 2 amperes on this side of the branch. The entire branch is one single branch and hence must carry the same current and hence nothing can go through this branch once again. If no part of I2 flows through this branch, no part of I1 flows through this particular branch, we conclude that no current will flow through 10 ohm resistance. So if I want, I can just define some current, let's say I3, but immediately I'm going to make a conclusion saying I3 is equal to zero. Now what can be the simple explanation to this? The simple explanation to I3 becoming zero is that this branch is not part of any closed loop. And please remember that the current can only flow through a closed loop path. In other words, if any part of I2 is flowing through this particular branch, there has to be a return path through which the same value of I2 come back and gets added to the remaining part, which is not happening. There is only a path that will take away the part of current I2, but there is no return path which will give that part back to I2 and hence this branch cannot carry any current. So I repeat the simple reason would be that this branch is not part of any closed loop. There is no return path for current to come back. So neither from this side nor from this side current will enter in this particular branch. Even if somebody says that current is flowing through this branch, in that case it simply indicates that a charge from one part of the network is flowing to the second part of the network and not coming back. Now this is again against the rules that we have discussed the KCL and KVL. For KVL to satisfy all the voltages added in one closed path must be zero. So it can never happen that the charge is being taken from one part of the network and given to the other part of the network and not taken back. That will never happen. All right. So all these points uh, indicate that the current in this particular branch will be equal to zero. So I3 is equal to zero. We are now ready to calculate VAB. So what is the definition or what is the approach we are going to use? Start from point B, travel up to point A. Let's do it. The first voltage will be across five ohm resistance. Five current is I1. Plus or minus will depend upon the direction of travel and the direction of current. We are traveling in the upward direction and I1 is traveling in the downward direction. So we are going in upward direction. I1 is flowing in downward direction. We are in the opposite direction of the current. So drop will be positive. Next, the voltage across 10 ohm resistance. Since I3 is zero, there is no drop across 10 ohm resistance. There is no point in writing anything in terms of voltage for 10 ohm resistance. Next will be voltage offered by eight volts. 
we are traveling like this so going from positive terminal to negative terminal so it's minus 8 next is the voltage across 2 ohm resistance that will be 2 current through 2 ohm resistance is i2 so 2 i2 i2 is flowing in downward direction we are going in upward direction opposite directions and hence the drop will be positive we reach point a so we stop and that's my vab let's put all the values i1 is 2 minus 8 i2 is 5 by 2 and therefore vab becomes this is 10 minus 8 plus 2 2 will cancel out this will give me 5 so this makes it 7 volts that's my vab that's my final answer so otherwise it was not a difficult question but one important thing that we have learned is whenever there is only single branch connecting the two loops and there is no return path the current cannot flow through such a branch